What's up, guys? What up? Welcome back to another long-awaited episode of Julosophy. Yes, very long-awaited. My mom and Eddie Bravo asked us about the podcast. Shout out to Eddie Bravo. We're back. Cool, man. And we recorded the podcast before the intro, so I hope you guys enjoy it. We were just like chatting about stuff. Literally, we were just chatting, and I just turned the mic on, and we kept chatting. Cool. And he ends with a weird analogy. Ciao. Obrigado. Peace out. Oh, lesson of the day. Lesson of the day? Portuguese lesson of the day? Yeah. Oh. O medo não para o morte, o medo para a vida. O medo não para a morte, o medo para a vida. What that means is fear doesn't stop death, fear stops life. <laughs> What is that? Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is no joke. It takes years to master. Are a vehicle for developing your human potential. Training in BJJ offers a powerful lens through which to examine some primary human concerns. Truth versus delusion, self-knowledge, ethics, and overcoming fear. There's more, there's more philosophy in our minds than actually uh, philosophy in any Ivy League school. Welcome to philosophy. Being given an opportunity to rise to the occasion, I think that's what... <laughs> we can talk about this, but it's like, I think when... when Your professor gives you a belt. Fuck that shit, bro. Just talk normally. Like, like your tone just changed. Oh, really? yeah. No, no, no. You're no. like, yeah, you know, like, it's like, um, as soon as you're... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I think about this a lot, actually. It's like uh, when you get a belt at a grading, it's basically your coach saying to you that they believe in you, that you can rise to this new level, I think. It's not like, oh, here's a blue belt. You're like the perfect definition of a blue belt. That's how I feel, at least. It's like, here, I'm giving you the opportunity to become a blue belt. I don't know. What do you think? Man, like, I think I, I, I should, like, sit next to you because this chair is noisy as fuck. Like, um, the thing, the thing. Should we do an intro? I will we'll do it later. Uh, yeah, like skip it flowing the chat cool, cool. like one thing uh, i was thinking is uh is about like how how yeah like i was thinking about what patrick said in the, the other podcast what did you say i forget I yes to that guy yes this if you if you knew you'd never get a belt mm-hmm. would you keep training jiu-jitsu and then we like took like one minute thing he's like guys you shouldn't even think about it yeah because of all the other things that that uh that like jiu-jitsu does to you but then at the same time like uh, all the other ways that influences in your life and at the same time i think like the belt is important it's important to you like to measure your progress and stuff yeah. like that it's important because i feel like in martial arts like jiu-jitsu works as has like a hierarchy right yeah. but also I think to even gauge that, like, I think each belt means something, it means like a period in your life, I guess, right? For sure. And like maybe a lesson you've learned or, yeah, it means something to, to your journey, I guess. Humans need motivation and people are motivated by other things. It's like, take a, a rabbit running after a carrot. Yeah. Without that carrot, I think that a rabbit would still enjoy running. Yeah. But sometimes they need that extra incentive to keep running. Uh, and I, I think that they're naturally born to run and they like running, but if the carrot is there, it's something that they can always focus on and which allows them to do what makes them happy. The carrot forces you to do what makes you happy. And I think for humans, a belt is just for some of us, a, a, a form of motivation that keeps us on the straight path. Mm. Like for me, uh, because the next belt is there, I know it keeps me on the straight path because I'm motivated to do it, but that's not to say that Without it, I wouldn't be happy doing jiu-jitsu. It's just a tool that keeps me doing jiu-jitsu. It's one of many tools that keeps me going on the jiu-jitsu journey. Because I know deep down it's what I want to keep doing anyway. But it's just an extra bonus to be like, all right, I'm going to keep keep doing this. But also what you said, I think hierarchies are super important. Some people would really disagree with this. Yeah. Like if you listen to Keenan, uh, yeah. my favorite Keenan, he's super against the hierarchy. But there was one podcast episode where he was talking about If it's important to uh, line up at the end of class based on your rank, your belt rank, if that's important or not, 
or if people should wear belts at all. And he still thought that there was important yeah. yeah what do you think do you think it's important to to line up by rank or you know how we do the warm-ups uh, in rank one thing i actually thought when you were talking now mm. it's 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 like how i think contradictory we are like as people because like you're like yeah the belt would keep me motivated but like part of me was like bruh bullshit yeah because like the thing is like it's a it's, I don't think it'd be the only thing. But yeah, like, one of the on. tools. You mm-hmm. said one yeah. of the tools. And it's like, it's it's like it's true, and at the same time, it's bullshit. Yeah. That's what I mean, like, we're contradictory. It's like, uh, I was thinking about this, right? Like, if you think about, for example, other things in life, like work and stuff like that, I remember it's like having a job that, like, maybe pays well and, like, gives you, like, better opportunities as as you go but maybe that's like yeah there are other incentives like the people you work with what what you are doing and shit yeah. like that right but like sometimes like a lot of those incentives might be in place but just like the idea of like not enjoying like we were talking about this the other day that i i'm finding like having fun is so important mm. part of jujitsu because yeah. we we progress so much and we're challenged every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is like a focus component to it where it's like, you're just focusing on the class. Like your phone is not on or anything yeah. like that. But at the same time, it's like, it's so hard, but mm-hmm. it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Some days it's not that fun, but even, but it's like the amount of fun is good enough to keep you coming. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I guess like you're right. Like the, the belt would be a thing, but, the thing is, it's like the happiness part of it. It's it's like a. It's it's weird because. I've been thinking about this a lot, right? It's like uh. We get the belt, we happy, mm-hmm. and then. That's the happiness it. fades. Yeah, the you, happen- you'll see so quickly. It's like you get a new belt, and you've worked so hard for this belt, and then you wake up the next day and you're like, oh man. There's like at least years to go before this happens again. Yeah, I think this is a it's a negative outlook, but I think many many of us humans we we do this. We have we're always focused on the next thing instead of enjoying the present moment. I think that's natural. It's mm. unfortunate. Yeah, but like yeah, you'll wake up the next day and you're like, okay, I got it. Now what? I was there was a podcast uh, that Muhammad Ali did. I think it was a video, mm-hmm. but it's in Portuguese, and he talks about the mentality of a black belt. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Uh, we'll keep going and we'll see his thing was all about like forgetting the belts and stuff actually like just like starting to think more in terms of understanding jujitsu and making it almost like become like a the cpu in your head kind of thing you know mm-hmm. and his 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 idea was like you should think that you are a black belt already mm-hmm. like you should feel that way and as you go through your process like through your journey it's like you've already arrived in your mind, so you start conducting yourself as a black belt now, mm-hmm. and you start feeling that way because that will give you the confidence. And and then, but but like e- at each belt, it's almost like you're showing to your black belt self how you would be at each belt. Mm-hmm. So it's it's almost like it's almost so then like when you arrive to an extent, yeah, you're not like you're not seeking validation from the belt. I think that was that was his point, right? Yeah, and. Uh, and I, I was thinking about this like mostly like because I guess like it's getting closer to the end of the year, getting closer to my birthday. So like maybe I'm thinking about life and shit like that. And it's just like this idea that that uh, yeah, man. Like actually, I think we spend too much time in our heads. Mm-hmm. You know, like thinking sort of like oh, I gotta, I gotta make sure that this, this. It's like uh, how do I say? It? I get there, get there, get there. And like, never satisfied. Is, yeah. Never satisfied. And I think, it, I mean, it's fine to keep growing, mm-hmm. but almost like the idea that what he was saying of like, I'm a black belt already. It's like finding that happiness, I guess, inside first. Mm-hmm. And almost like as we get, we grow and shit in life, or it's just like thinking, Oh, this is me showing to myself how I challenge myself. Yeah. But like, 
almost giving yourself the self validation, I guess. For sure. And also, you know, it's like jujitsu never lies. And what I mean by that is like, uh, if you were to stick a, a brown belt on me tomorrow, and I went, <laughs> you know, which would be ridiculous. Uh... And I went to a gym as a brown belt, like people would know within five minutes. Well, maybe less. Yeah, than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending on which belt you're going against yeah, or which yeah, person, yeah. right? Yeah, they'd know immediately that I wasn't a brown belt. Um, maybe if you go to the kids' class. Yeah, maybe if know? I went to the kids' class, it would take them five minutes. But... Like, I want two at a time. I want two at a time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you... <sighs> sorry, man. Like yeah. super random. How yeah. many kids do you think you can wrestle at once? Like, bro, I think I could take like at least five kids. Like what age? It's like, like three. Three to five. Not like that shit, man. No? Like, let, let's let start, like, at six. Six is, like, grade one, right? Yeah. How many grade ones you could take? Yeah, like, five to six. Five or six? Yeah, but I wouldn't use any jujitsu. I would just kick. Strike! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why, how many do you think you could take? Depends. I think you could take more. I don't know, man. Like, uh... I think you could take, like, a full classroom. It depends. It's, like, how crazy are the kids, though? Because, like, no, if, they're kids, crazy. Bro, if kids are biting you, you're fucked. They're, like, Floridian kids. Uh? They're Floridian. Kids. Oh man, they're kids from Florida. from Florida, like they're meant to become the Florida men. Yeah, they've been hanging out in the swamps. Nah, bro, like his kids are gonna bite you. They're gonna poke you in the eyes. Mm. So, like, I think. Yeah, I'm down. Let's find out. When is kids' class at the gym? Well, they're doing the grading at one. Yeah, like I think we could do like not fight them, but just like ask them to hold, pin you down, yeah. and see if you can get up, you know, like... I would just feel so bad if I hurt one of the kids, like, like yeah, really yeah. hurt the kid. Yeah, yeah that, and that's quite easy. Especially, like, because they would do use all their strength. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay, no, we're not going to do Never that. Never mind, yeah, that's... Yeah. that's yeah. Okay, we can do it. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, man. All right. Well, today's a special day. Tell them what today is and why we're talking about belts. Oh, yeah, today's the grading... The grading at our gym, the London Fight Factory, and it's it's really exciting. It's a, it's always like a fun day, like really emotional. Yeah, today is like Christmas for me. Uh, I love this day, and today is like what I love about it is that I know I I would bet my entire life saving that nothing is coming my way. I was I was lucky enough to get promoted last year, so that definitely means nothing's coming my way. And so I can just go and enjoy the moment and hopefully watch my friends get promoted and just enjoy it. Like, I'm not stressed. I know that there are some people in, in the room or at the gym now who are, like, extremely stressed and hoping that something happens. And, you know, it may it may happen, may not. But it's a nice feeling to be able to go into it stress-free and be like, you know, I'm just going to sit back and watch this. Um, and the vibe is cool. It's a really cool vibe, like... You can you can feel the anxiety in the room, but you can also feel like the joy and the com- sense of community. It's like a, it's almost like a tournament vibe almost. How would you describe it? What's the room like during grading? Yeah, it's like uh, I think I think you feel how much everybody cares. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 this thing about like when someone who doesn't train asks you why do you care about this shit so much, and you can't explain. Mm. That day, I think you can actually feel why we care so much yeah. you can't actually explain why still but you can feel it because um it's like um it's a saturday yeah. pretty much yeah it's like a, it's it feels like the whole day but not really mm-hmm. and everybody stopped doing like usually a lot of people don't train on the weekends and yeah. stuff but even when you see someone get promoted and it feels good you know like yeah. it's like a yeah so i don't know i don't know how to explain it's cool because I think jujitsu is still one of those sports where it's still really, really hard to get a belt. Um, I think I don't want to <laughs> don't get upset karate people. If there are any random people that listen to this that do karate, but I think it's from what I've heard, at least it's pretty easy to get a, like you can get a black belt in three years, something shots fired. Yeah. Shots fired. Come see me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's th- my gang. Yeah. Test my gangster. Um, you know, and it's like, so belts maybe don't hold as much meaning. I'm sure you're stoked to get a new belt in karate. But when realistically, at our gym at least, you don't see people change belts for a minimum of like two years each. At, and that's like at the minimum. You see guys who have been at belts for years and years. And it's like, damn, that's years of hard work. Like, 
if you're getting a, a blue belt, you've been working hard at our gym, most likely for at least two years. And we're not talking training once or twice a week. We're training multiple times a week. You're putting your body, like you're screwing your body up. You're learning so much. You're fighting guys who are much better than you. You're probably competing. Um, and it's just a lot of stress in your mind and your body. And so when you look back on that journey just to get to this next belt, it's literally only the second belt in jiu-jitsu in the case of a blue belt. The amount of work you've done is probably equivalent to a lot of high belts in other martial arts. And it's like, damn, I can't speak for all. I'm sure there are some hardcore karate gyms. Bro, you're, you're attracting some, some know, different know, type of I, energy. Yeah. It's equivalent to higher belts in other uh, fights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. I believe continue, it, continue. I believe by the it. way, I don't stand by these remarks. <laughs> all right, I stand by it. But, all right, the point I'm trying to make is we, we work very hard for our belts, and jiu-jitsu has maintained its uh, difficulty in getting belts. I'll, I'll stop talking about other martial arts. If you want some smoke, just follow him on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> underscore John Jitsu. Yeah, underscore John Jitsu, and just DM him. Just DM him, like, uh, the purple devil devil uh, emoji, and it's on. <laughs> As soon as you see him, just strike, and he's going to pull a De La Riva. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, God damn. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's interesting. Like, I guess, what does your belt mean to you? So, I guess, other than being higher than post martial arts. <laughs> what does it mean to me? Yeah, like, but, like or, or I guess, like, talk, because before this, you're, you're telling me, I think yesterday... No, on the resenya, mm -hmm. we we're just kicking it. You're like, ah, uh, uh, I think John from today would smoke John from a year ago for sure. And that's the coolest thing about jujitsu, is every once in a while you get a a chance to look back. I don't know. There comes a point in your jujitsu, like maybe you had a really good day, a really good training day, and you look back and you're like, damn, when I first got my blue belt, compared to I was to to what I am now, I think I've learned so much, uh, and I can, like, maybe in a different episode talk about, like, I've kind of taken a new approach to learning in jiu-jitsu, I've had to spend, unfortunately, a decent amount of time off lately, due to a bunch of BS in my life, whether it be illness, injury, all sorts of stuff, um, but I've still maintained active, if that makes any sense, but that's a whole nother episode, um, So, I think Iki and I were talking about this earlier in the episode. I'm not even sure if we were recording or if we were just talking shit. But it's like, um, I think when you first get a belt, it's, uh, you're getting like a new pair of shoes. I th yeah, this is an interesting analogy if I do say so myself. But it's like getting a belt is like a brand new pair of shoes. Um, when you first put the shoes on, mm. you can tell it fits you, mm. right? Like the shoes fit, they're your size. Mm. But they're not your shoes yet. They're not comfortable yet. You haven't worn the shoes in. And you get to a point where uh, there's that sweet spot in the belt lifespan where it's like, all right, these shoes really fit me now and they feel good and I can run in them and I don't get blisters and it feels good. And then there comes a point where these shoes are too old for you. There's holes in them. Like you need to get a new pair of shoes. And that's when you upgrade to the new belt. So I think a belt is like a pair of shoes. So all the people that are getting new belts today are getting new pairs of shoes. But that doesn't mean that the shoes perfectly fit them. They're your size. But you get to grow into those shoes and make them your own. And I think that's what's cool about new belts. Damn, that was deep. That was deep. I like that. Yeah, bro. You know where you fucked up? Where? You should have just kept it silent. Yeah. And like, <laughs> let me say that was deep. <laughs> Yeah, bro, like you're, you sounded like a Buddha there. Then yeah. you're like, that was deep. That was really deep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was, oh, that was deep, though. All right, we'll edit that out then. Huh? We'll edit that part out then. Nah, man, keep it real. Oh, damn. We'll also keep the part where you say you want smoke yeah. with any other martial no, art. You don't need to edit that out. I'm down with that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, those kids are going to smoke it to yeah, be here. Yeah. But, uh, uh, No, nah, man, I actually love that analogy. Um, you know, like, one thing that was interesting also, I was listening to, to a podcast. No, nah, it's just an audiobook. Mm. And the guy was talking about the bamboo tree mm -hmm. and how the bamboo tree takes about seven years to grow. Like, like, like let's say it grows, 
but like for the roots of the bamboo tree to, to grow deep enough. So for seven years, nothing much seems to change. And then after seven years, when the roots are like deep, it grows out of nowhere and it's like strong and like wind comes, rain comes and it's strong as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like the peak, it, it happens after seven years. It's like ridiculous. So I was wondering, like uh, you were talking about this of how uh, there was a time we were training hard, like lifting. That was like a new thing you introduced to your thing. Mm -hmm. Even your grips, like you're training lapel grips. Man, it looked like a Van Damme movie, like when he's training with like the guy uh that used to be at uh old coach back in the days and now he's gonna go for revenge his brother or something yeah you're like heavy 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 on like weights and shit and i was wondering that after there was a point where everything started not working out getting sick uh, skin infection all that stuff mm -hmm. but you had a lot of time off the mats and you were studying mm -hmm. And you said that after that, when you came back, it felt like another peak. Not a bamboo tree one, but it was a huge peak in your blue belt. Like mm -hmm. the same way that you're training, 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 weights, peak. Then training, 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 studying, peak. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a, a separate su subject from the belts, but I think it's an interesting one anyway. It's like, uh, I think there's a lot to be said about studying jujitsu. It's not just going through the motions. It's not an, enough if you really want your game to get better, it's not enough to just be sitting, coming to training every day and just training and not thinking about things. I think we sometimes don't think about how mental jujitsu is. Uh, you need to start forming like a game plan in your mind. You need to start what I what I was doing in this time off was I was studying a lot of video and starting to try to envision myself in these positions and think of combinations of moves that I want to do. I think as you get better in jiu-jitsu, your first option rarely works. It's just a, a way to set up your second option or third option. In the same way chess, you know, it's like you, you can't just move one piece and expect to win the game. You have to move multiple pieces in, in a series of movements to put yourself into an advantageous position. And jiu-jitsu is like that. So I was taking time away to study video and start to envision myself making these series of moves. Does that make any sense? Mm. But bro, like, you also started keeping a proper journal now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another thing. I started, it was one day where I sat and I took, um, I made like a map of myself and every single, this is going to sound a little crazy, but I guess I am a little crazy. Um, Just a little bit. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would put myself, I would write down every single position that I find myself in and uh, start to diagram out all my different options from there. And that really started to show me, like, where are the holes in my jiu-jitsu? Like, what, what positions do I only have one option from? And if I only have one option, as I was saying earlier, you know, like, plan A rarely works. So you need at least plan A, plan B, and based on your opponent's uh, positions or movements to your positions. And it's like... Um, once I started to lay these things out, it really starts to like sink into your mind. These are my options. And when you find yourself in that position in training, you start to go through all those options. I don't know. It just kind of solidified what I was trying to achieve in each position. And uh, yeah, it didn't feel like time wasted. Let's put it that way. Like even though I was off the mat, not physically training, I was still mentally training. So when I did come back, it didn't feel like I had been out that long, even though it had been, you know, like two weeks, three weeks, whatever. So, yeah. It's interesting how, like, because uh, I, I, uh, I keep a journal as well, but, like, your journal was, like, very, like, nerdy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, really, like, organized. Today I did this. And, like, mine was, like, more like I'll look at a technique and then try to think about, uh, why do I take the base from this? And this is what I was thinking. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, mine was, like, very random. But, like, I really liked that system. And then almost, like, rethinking yeah you're gonna say something. no yeah i mean when you said the word system it's like uh i think system is the exact word that i was looking for to describe what i'm trying to do i think if you look at a lot of the really good jiu-jitsu guys these days they have systems like if you look at danaher mm. uh of the danaher death squad um 
his whole thing is he creates systems for different positions. He's got a leg locking system. He's got a close guard system. He's got an attack in the back system. And it's a series of movements that will lead you to a goal. And it's like, I want to have a system, my own personalized system, because I don't believe that one system works for every person. I really don't believe that. That's just my unintelligent blue belt mind. But I still believe that my system may not work for you and your system may not work for me. I think that's why jujitsu is very difficult to teach, I think especially to a large group of people with different body types and abilities. It's like, you got to figure out what works for you. And I think that's a cool thing, like training with you, Iki, is that like, as time has gone on, our systems have like gone in completely different directions. Mm. Um, But I'm still able to learn certain things from you because like you've developed a really good half guard game, right? Thanks. No, it's true though. It is true. It's undeniable. Like literally every tournament you've been in so far that I've seen, you've ended up in half guard and been able to create movement off of half guard. Like you, the last tournament you you won the whole thing and it was I would honestly give 80% of the credit to your half guard. Uh and it's oh, like thank you for the 20% of the credit. Well, I don't I don't know what the re- the rest was. The, the other 20 is for me and for All our training together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll right. take that. But it's like, I'm not a huge half guard guy. It's not my thing. Mm. Um, but that's not to say that I don't end up in half guard. Mm. So by l- training for me, with you, I learn like little tricks about half guard just so I can get back to my own stuff. Mm. Um, and I think probably a similar thing uh, with training with me you probably learn little things here and there that like help you get back to your own stuff but your system is completely different from my system mm. and i think as time will, will go on our systems will grow even further apart but that's that's okay is what i'm trying to say and the thing is almost like respecting that that's okay and respecting that because i don't and like because i don't do that mm. understanding that is important because it's like even though i can't do it or it might not work for me it's still dangerous if yeah. someone knows how to do it Like, um, you know, talking about, like, half guard and stuff, like, and training, one thing that I focused on this year, mm-hmm. um, and, like, I'm thinking about, like, next year, um, what do I want to focus on? Uh, it's, I focused a lot on getting a good half guard. Like, I just wanted to get good at half guard. Yep. I, I pretty much just, that was my main goal. And even from takedowns it's like takedowns that if the takedown doesn't work i can pull half guard straight mm-hmm. away and uh and i feel like comfortable in the position mm-hmm. and i like the position so but the thing i learned the most is the amount of patience is like i think it goes a little bit back to the belts it's like If I focus on half guard for a year, because that was the thing, the thing that I was afraid. It's like, oh, I'll miss this, I'll miss that, yeah. I'll miss De La Rive and all these things. But it's like, in the journey through mastery, there's like no set date of like, yeah. you're going to learn all these things, you yeah. know. So I can focus on half guard for the next two, three years. But the thing that surprised me the most is that all the other positions that I wanted to learn, like the La Rive and stuff, I know, to, like, the fight is not going to end and start at half guard. Mm-hmm. It's going to move. So I ended up understanding, oh, this is when I have to roll upside down and stuff, yeah. like, just to get back to the position that I feel most comfortable yeah. with. I had to learn a bunch of other ones. And I had to understand passing. I had to understand all these things. It's from one position. You know, so that was that was quite interesting. And... I'm thinking now, like, oh, I want to focus on one thing next year, mm-hmm. right? Like one type of passing yeah, and see if I can understand everything else. And I know that you have been focusing on something that is quite, for me, it's not my style at all. I just like to hold it every once in a while. But yeah, it's very, it's very different. Yeah, takedowns. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Lapel guard, lapel worm guard ringworm guard squid guard anything involving the lapel uh yeah i'm still really new to it believe it or not i I actually don't think it's been a year of me trying really hard to get it but uh i think in the past 
a uh, couple months, I really made some gains in my lapel system. And I think this is a shout out to our coach, Luis. Um, at first, he was very skeptical of my uh, ridiculousness with the lapel because, you know, on the surface, it's very Nutella. You know, like <laughs> you grab uh, the lapel and you start hanging on it like a wild monkey. And then he, I don't know, saw that I was like dedicated to it and he saw that I uh, I showed him some positions that I think he, he actually liked. I showed him the strength of the position and now he's kind of been helping me troubleshoot uh, some of the, the positions that I get stuck in because it's very hard. The thing about it is that w- w- if you get to a solid lapel position, if you get to the position you want to, it's very hard to stop. But getting to that position is not easy. Um, so he's been helping me figure out ways to get there. Um, but yeah, that's something that I've been focusing on and I want to keep focusing on for the next at least year, I guess. That's dope, man. Yeah. Like I remember this podcast with Muhammad Ali and Bernard Faria. And... Uh... Yeah, like I'm a Bernard Faria fanboy because Jared is looking at me like, yeah, right. You remember that? So yeah, like, uh, and damn talking about positions because uh, Ali was saying that he used to be very good at triangles early mm-hmm. on. But then people started telling him, oh, you have to focus on everything. Yeah. And he says he regrets it. Yeah. He should have kept going with the triangles because now he's sort of good at everything. But he he's not a guy that is known from one move. And he was like, I, I could probably have won a lot of a lot more fights if I had stuck. And he was talking about Bernard because Bernard Faria is like, he grabs that one position. Yeah. And you know what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. And he does it. And you just can't stop it. And I think it's the same thing with Keenan Cornelius and stuff. Yeah. It's like people know he's going to pull guard. They know how he's going to pull guard. Mm-hmm. They just can't stop it. You know what's crazy? It's like speaking of strategy and being good at one thing. Um, I think a a problem I have with my jiu-jitsu is that when I'm training, I don't really care about winning. I don't like losing. I don't like getting submitted, but I don't care about winning. I don't know if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. but I don't focus enough on submitting the person. I enjoy playing the game of jiu-jitsu, and um, I think that's something that kind of holds me back. It's like I'll, I'm more happy with like sweeping the guy with a lapel sweep than I am getting to a dominant position and like choking them. Like that doesn't do as much for me. I don't I don't find that to be fun or like triangle chokes. When I first started doing jiu-jitsu, I've got very long legs. Uh, when I first started doing jiu-jitsu, it was at a no-gi only gym. It was pretty much no-gi only. We didn't even, I was so young and so, I had no idea anything about jiu-jitsu. I didn't even know you wore belts in jiu-jitsu. Because there's no gi and they didn't enforce a uniform policy until uh, like a year after I was training there. Mm. Um, And they didn't make us line up by rank or anything. We were just training, like which looking back is pretty cool. But um, so I learned the triangle choke and it was one of my first things. And because I had long legs, I was like pretty decent at shooting triangle chokes and so like every match I would just go for the triangle choke and I would get it a lot um and then it got to the point where I was just kind of like bored of it it's like it wasn't about winning for me it was just I want to do something more I, I like the game of jiu-jitsu and I think maybe yeah if I stuck with just shooting triangles all the time my triangles would be very good but then I think I would lose interest in jiu-jitsu it's like this isn't a life or death situation for me I don't need to like submit someone to it's true, but I think those guys were also talking about in terms of when they were already purple belts and they were like, um, I want to do this because I want to be a world champion. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, Definitely. yeah, yeah. Like, so I think it was more in that sense. I'm saying I think I should have more of that mentality. Like, I think I should be like, I need to get really good at something or have a set of moves that I know are going to help me finish the match and so that I can, because I like competing you know, to some mm-hmm. degree and I, if, what's the point in competing if you don't want to win? Uh, you know, that's like, there's a quote, Bushesha saying that, like, I don't go there to win. I don't go there to fight. I go there to kill my opponent. <laughs> like, and I remember Luis also telling me once, I think I was, I was telling him, like, ah, I'm struggling with, like, finishing people. He's like, yeah, try tell this to the guys trying to take your wallet. Like, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> on the street. So, 
um, talking of tournaments, right? Mm-hmm. And this killing and not killing thing. Uh, Galinho mm. is a brown belt in our gym and an instructor as well. He has a very interesting perspective on this, which is being focused, uh, being in a moment and being relaxed. This tournament, the last tournament we were in, mm-hmm. bro, what the fuck, man? Like, you'd think that after a couple of tournaments, you're just gonna ease into it. The moment they call your motherfucking name, <laughs> you're like, ah, ah. <laughs> hi, uh, yeah, yeah, is that your name? Yeah, sit there. And like, you have to go. And it's like so much adrenaline. Yeah. And I remember, uh, so it's like we're getting ready for the tournament and like throughout the whole thing, I was dancing, like not dancing, dancing, but like shaking around, moving around, like, you know, like. As if I was dancing, playing songs in my head, like the same songs that play in the gym, yeah. singing and stuff. And I won the first two fights. The third one, I go to ask, like, oh, it's taking too long. And throughout the whole thing, I was the same thing, like really relaxed. The third one's taking too long. I go to ask. And I like my hand is on the table. Yep. Shaking. And yeah, no, nah, nah, it's normal. The yeah. guy says, oh. Yeah, your name is... Ah, your fight is in five minutes. You're in the final. My hand starts shaking. Like, as soon as I heard that, like, the stakes just went high. I watched the other guys fight. And then I see his good with triangles. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, if I pass guard, I have to go like Toriando. I can't can't, can't, can't get in between his legs. Oh, shit. But my best guard pass is over under or double unders. Oh, my God. It's just like, first thing that happens, I pull guard. I sweep him, and then it's time to pass, and I freeze. <laughs> yeah, because like the guy looks at me, and I look at him, and he kind of smiles, like he has an open guard. He smiles a little bit, like, <laughs> but that's like in my head, like he probably wasn't smiling. Yeah, he definitely wasn't right? smiling at you all. Know? <laughs> but like he's like, oh, ha, 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 come into my triangle. I yeah. hear that, and then like, for pure luck, I remember to put my knee on his chest yeah. and try to knee slice, but. It's like, uh, I think that the major lesson or something that was weird for me there, it was like, it's like how tense you can get. It's like how, how like, even though like that idea of killing, 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 I think it should be there, but it should be as like part of this game, the, the end game of this game is to kill, right? It's to, it's to finish the person. But like, I think going that ramped up, it's like it doesn't help. Because that was the fight that didn't go well for me. Because I felt like I have to make something happen here. And I have to, like, and I think when I think like that, I'm also thinking that he's thinking like that. So, like, I'm thinking that he's thinking, yeah, I got to try. And, like, so I become afraid of him. And I start thinking more of him. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Let Let me read something to you. I was talking the other day. So I'm reading a book on the the mindset of a fighter. Yeah, yeah. I forget the name of the book, actually. The Fighter's Mind. The Fighter's Mind. I saw it. All right. And uh, speaking back to that first jiu-jitsu gym that I went to, I've I've been speaking to my first jiu-jitsu coach. His name's Charles McCarthy. Yeah. He's fought in the UFC. He's he's a black belt under Ricardo Laborio. Yeah. Out of American Top Team. Um, And we were talking about, uh, what do you call it? Like the mentality going into competitions. And uh, he sent me a, a really nice, like, long message about, uh, you know, fighting and, and yeah. competition, your yeah. mindset. And he said that, uh, basically, if you accept that you're going to win, if you are better and you've trained harder, then all the work is done. And uh, there's nothing to stress about, you know, like, all the hard work is done. What will be will be. You've trained and it's not like your skills are going to go up or the other guy's skills are going to go up. You're basically just two game characters with a set of skills, and the stress should be gone. Uh, what's done is done, and you're going to go out there and compete. Also, the other thing, the, the thing that stuck with me a little more was he was like, you don't want to be sitting there and be stressed and nervous and make it an unenjoyable experience uh, in the sense that this is a very exciting time of your life. Like, not many people are going to uh, experience what you, me, and all of our other jiu-jitsu friends get to experience by going out and competing. This is such an exhilarating, exciting thing. You get to go out there and do what you love to do. And realistically, it's somewhat of a short period of time in your life. 
Um, and so go out there and enjoy it. You don't want to look back when you're like 90 and you can't do jiu-jitsu anymore and be like, oh, I wasted all those years competing being nervous or like getting butterflies in my stomach and not being able to give the best version of yourself because you were so nervous and scared worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet. The match hasn't happened yet. Like, uh, and you're creating all these scenarios in your head that, again, nothing's happened yet. And so if you just accept there's going to be a winner, there's going to be a loser, you've done the best you can, just go out, give the best version of yourself and enjoy it. Jiu-jitsu is meant to be enjoyed. Competition is meant to be enjoyed. We're not fighting for the next meal on our plate. You know, we're, we're out there to improve our skills and do a sport that we love. Everyone there loves the sport. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there on a Sunday afternoon. You know? You think, like, we kind of overvalue just, like, good emotions. Like, you know, like, almost like uh, praise and, like, care so much that this has to go well because the thing that actually matters is not being here, having, like, great time of my life, enjoying this moment. It's the praise. Yeah. I got to get the praise. That's so true. That is so true. And it's like, what if I told you that you would go to a tournament and no one would ever know what the result would be? How would you look at the tournament? What if it was just a closed room thing and you and your opponent went in and nobody knew the outcome? How would you think about competing? That's not necessarily a question to you, Iki. It's just a, a yeah, yeah. something to think about. I, I heard, I, I remember hearing, I don't know who asked this. I think it was like in a group of friends and mm-hmm. someone was asking like, he was trying to make a point that uh, a lot of times we are more motivated to like, uh, like we, it's like, when checking our motivations about like why we do things, sometimes we don't notice when we're doing it for other people and you're giving an example in like guys, for example. Yeah. Most guys would rather have like sex. And he would ask like, do you think most guys would rather have sex with a woman that everyone thinks is attractive? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, what was the question? The question was like, let's say, um, girl x like she's really famous really popular and everyone thinks she's attractive yeah and god you don't think she's attractive exactly you don't think she's necessarily that attractive yeah and the question was would you rather now you also think she's attractive but the thing is would you rather go on a date with her and get to know her right Uh and actually have sex with her Uh and have like an amazing time yeah. Or something like that, and no one knows. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Or would you rather go out with her <laughs> and have her tell everyone that, like, yes, we had the best time ever and stuff like that? Yeah. Whether you did or you 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 did, it doesn't matter. Or maybe and it maybe wasn't the best time ever. Would you? It's like, uh, would you rather have that or have? Ev- she she agrees. Like, yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of times, like it would be easy for us to be like, oh no, I'll be the first one. We'd have like this great relationship and everything. But sometimes it's like we can't see our own bias. That's that's how you say, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like and we like a lot of times, most people would be like, would actually want the second one. Like everyone yeah. knows, right? I feel you. Yeah. Definitely feel it. So I guess that's the thing. But listen. After that extremely confusing analogy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if anybody out there understood what the hell Iki was saying, you, you just send me a message because I'm still confused. Jesus Christ. <laughs> On that note, we have 45 minutes to make it to the gym because today is our grading day. Cool. So we're going to do actually the intro now and then we'll add the intro to the end, to the beginning, right? Yeah. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>